The skill system in PoE is really cool and versatile. Personally, it's one of my favorite things about the game, but there have always been some awkward things about it. We really wanted to find a way to address all of the shortcomings while not sacrificing even a single bit of the functionality that we already have. So you can see in the inventory here, there's something missing. All of the sockets on the items. This is because in Path of Exile 2, you no longer put gems into your items. Instead, the skill gems themselves have sockets, as you can see here, and there is a dedicated screen for socketing them. Jonathan's going to change his split arrow skill for Ice Shot and add some support gems to it. There are some really big advantages here. For one, every single skill gem in Path of Exile 2 can be a six link. This is going to cause huge changes in how players design character builds. In the past, players didn't want to have more than one primary attack skill because you could only have one or two six links on your character. Now it's totally viable to have a lot of powerful primary attack skills with full support gems. The thing I'm really happy about, though, is you don't have to screw around with your gems all the time when you're leveling. Check out this bow here. The socket colors are the same between the two bows. They're both four green sockets, like every other bow in the game. And this means that when you find a new item, you just slap it on. You don't have to think about getting fusings and jewelers out because you do that on the gems themselves. As we swap between the bows as well, And for clarity, this means that in game, when you're trying to roll your perfect item, you can focus on the mods and separately on the sockets and the skills. So you'll see here as Jonathan swaps the bows, the DPS values for all your skills updated at a glance. And that's because we've completely changed how the character screen works and so on. Jonathan will go into more detail later today about that. So it's still possible to fine tune socket colors on items if you need to. But because everything that drops has fixed sockets, it's way easier to just pick something up and put it on while you're leveling. For new players, another really great advantage is it's now impossible to socket a support gem into a skill gem it doesn't work with. For example, multiple projectiles here just can't go into Leap Slam, but as you can see, it works on the other bow skills. So you might be wondering about skills like auras. A lot of the time in the old skill system, you'd throw a few gems together in a four link with few or no support gems. How can you do that when you have such a limited number of active skill slots now? The answer is meta gems. Meta gems are like super support gems that let you put multiple actives into them. For example, we want to run a few different auras on this character, so we put the proficiency gem into the character and load it up full of auras. It even gives you a single keybind you can use to cast all of your auras with one click. Come on. Trigger gems like cast on crit are also meta gems, so this means you can put an entire cast on crit setup in one gem as one of your eight six links you can now have. There is a huge amount more to talk about with what meta gems allow you to do with Path of Excel's skill system, and Jonathan will be going into all of it in the PoE, ga PoE 2 gameplay deep dive later today. He'll cover how all the existing Path of Exile things work in Path of Exile 2, as well as introducing a whole lot of new stuff. That is a talk not to miss. Oh, and I should add, the uh, supports you're seeing here for the bow skills, they're 3.9 content, so you'll get to see that much, much sooner. And that's something I want to emphasize. While Path of Exile 4.0, sorry, Path of Exile 2, as we're now calling the campaign, is still quite far <laughs> away, we are getting as much of the content in as early as we can, apart from the campaign itself. So you'll get to play most of the new stuff we're doing quite a lot earlier. It's the campaign and the skill system that are being rolled out on launch day. So one of the things we really wanted to improve on Path of Exile 2 was our lighting system. The new PBR rendering, in addition to a much more realistic light fall off, makes this area look significantly better than we could possibly achieve in the past. So you can see here there are some monsters called courtesans who can explode the blood cretins. When blood cretins are covered in blood, they get a lot stronger, so you have to be careful. We've tried very hard to design very interesting monster fights, starting as early as Act 1 of the new campaign. This uh, area generated much longer than it usually did in every other demo we did. <laughs> yeah, but that's actually a feature that um, we're, we're proud of. We have put a lot of work into making sure there's even more randomization on our random areas. I know racers will hate to hear that because they can't memorize the layouts, but we want it to be very, very hard to find your way around. And there's a talk that Reese is doing later, uh, I think it's tomorrow morning, where we're talking about topics like world generation and stuff like that, rather than just level generation. You'll, you'll see what he has to say, but it's pretty, pretty interesting. Uh, 
Ah. <laughs> Had to happen on the stage demo. <laughs> we have to give you an authentic Path of Exile experience involving some backtracking. <laughs> I've got a Quicksilver, so we're all right. I mean. <laughs> Oh, this run-through is going a lot better than some of the rehearsals we did. It turns out some of the monsters hit pretty hard if you're not good at it, so... <laughs> What's that, sorry? Yeah, you've got to level your gems up, Jonathan. Oh, it's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> so this is Exile Con plays POE. Okay, should he go left or right? <laughs> Awesome. Please, please make them stop. They're whispering. They're screaming. No, don't give in. You're not dead. You're still moving. You're still here. the things that's really exciting about creating an entirely new campaign is that we get to apply all of our boss creation skills to early bosses as well. The first few acts of the original Path of Exile have bosses that are some of the earliest content we ever made, and their age is really showing. For comparison, this fight here is at the same level as Fairgraves in the original campaign, but as you can see, it's a lot more advanced with a lot more going on. Level up animation. <laughs> so here we are in Einhar's favorite place, the hunting grounds. Now, we're ready to show you something that players have been requesting for a really long time. You've seen it. In Path of Exile 2, we finally have shape-shifting. So, each shapeshift form can use any regular Path of Exile 2 attack. That makes sense. Here on the Werewolf, for example, we're using Leap Slam and Cleave. And one of the things that we thought was really important with shapeshifting is that you can change back and forth at literally any time, mid-animation, walking around in the middle of a skill, whatever, just hit the button and change forms. So one of the things that we're really proud of is the new grass technology we have. It's done using pre-computed ray tracing and is way nicer looking and has much better performance than what we used before. <laughs> Got some friends there?
So that right there is a small slice of Path of XL 2. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you very much, Jonathan. So almost the entirety of Act 1 of Path of Exile 2 is complete and playable today on the show floor. It's not just those areas, it starts right on the riverbanks at the beginning like you saw in the trailer. Play all the way through, that summer in the middle. If you can make it in the 45 minute timer, just keep playing, see if you can get to the Axe boss that isn't done yet, we'll see. Um, <laughs> Please check it out and let us know what you think. You can play it on the bottom floor of the convention or on the top floor on one of the 120 Omen gaming PCs generously provided by HP. It's a logo. <laughs> <coughs> so, as I said, the demo on the show floor is played right from the start of Act 1. It has quite a lot of different content than what you just watched. If you're watching from home, the best way to see this demo, because you can't play it, unfortunately, is to watch one of the streamers who's going to be playing the demo throughout the weekend. The first of these is at noon in New Zealand time, in 90 minutes, when Kriparian plays while chatting with Jonathan. Yeah, I know. I was a little bit so, some systems in Path of XL2 are not ready to announce yet, and so they're not present in today's demo. The first thing a lot of you are doing is hitting P to see the passive skill screen. Surprise, it's just the same as the in development 3 and I know one for now. That's because we'll work out what we're doing with the passive skill screen, blow your socks off with that, and then announce that at some stage before release. So in around three and a half hours at 2 p.m., Jonathan's going to present a deep dive into some of Path of Exile's two new game mechanics. Um, a closer look at the new skill system, metagems, 19 new ascendancy classes, and more. So. You definitely need to be here at 2 p.m. to watch that, but conveniently, it's after my 1 p.m. deep dive, about 390, which is equally good, so just, you're here for the afternoon, basically, and if you're watching from home, I'm sorry if you live in Europe right now. <coughs> so, we've just announced how we're making huge changes to Path of Exile's campaign in 4.0. How about the end game? Well, it's been two years since we launched War for the Atlas, which was our last substantial end game focused expansion, so we feel it's high time for some big changes. What we'd like to show you now is what's coming in Path of Exile 3.9, which will be released in one month. Listen carefully, for this is important. I worked with a group of exiles once, much like yourselves. Together, we faced a terrible evil that plagued the Atlas and threatened our world. Through great perseverance, we were able to defeat the Elder. But it wasn't enough. They kept going back. Over and over, again and again. There was something inside them that could never be satisfied. They sought more power, more prestige. They sought to rule and conquer those strange lands. Each time they returned, I feared more and more what they were becoming. So I did what I thought was right. I sealed them in the Atlas. Forever. They found a way back. Path of Exile Conquerors of the Atlas is an expansion with a new endgame Atlas storyline set after the defeat of the Elder. The Exiles who defeated him have become a danger to Rayclast, so Zyna has attempted to trap them in the Atlas. I guess there's only so much grinding you can do before you go insane, eh? <laughs> From what we can see, Havoc and Steel Mage are both pretty close to that point right now. 
So when you first open the Atlas in 3.9, it's going to look significantly different. First of all, you notice you now start in the center of the Atlas. But the much larger change is there are only 91 maps to start with. In order to unlock the rest, you're going to need to find and defeat the Conquerors to take back Watchstones and socket them into the Atlas. Socketing one of these Watchstones into a region of the Atlas will both level up the tier of maps and reveal new maps. You can, up, you can socket up to four Watchstones into each region, revealing all the maps and eventually raising the level of the entire Atlas so that every map is between tier 14 and 16 if you want. <coughs> <coughs> Because you can socket and unsocket these watchstones whenever you like, you can completely customize which maps you're finding on the fly as your strategy changes. Oh, yep, it's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> you're, gonna find, you're gonna fight four of the Conquerors many times as you play through the new Atlas. These are challenging fights, so it's only fitting that they have some special rewards. If you're lucky, a Conqueror might drop a new type of support gem that we're calling a Support Gem Plus. These new gems are better versions of existing supports, which at level 1 are more powerful than the level 20 versions of the ones they replace. So this has an additional fork compared to the normal one, for example. OK, there's plenty more stuff to discuss about Conquerors of the Atlas. For example, how do you get these cool new currency items? We'll go into more detail about this, along with the Support Gem Plus system, the final boss fight, what's replacing Schaefer and Elder Rares, new skill and support gems introduced in 3.9, and more in the deep dive presentation later today. Like every other Path of Exile expansion, Conquerors of the Atlas also contains a new Challenge League, and we have a trailer of that league to show you. Take a clean knife and cut a sample of flesh. Repeat four times. Mix the five samples in an equiformetic solution. Heat. Stand back. The intrinsic darkness will make itself known. Observe its anger, its aggression. Observe its changing form. It's never comfortable to stay in one shape for long. It will try to kill you. Best not let it. Plunge the clean knife repeatedly. Try more heat. More! Perfect. Only every living creature to go. In the Metamorph Challenge League, you will find and collect samples from some of the monsters you kill. Tane Octavius will let you combine multiple samples of monsters together to create a shape-shifting Metamorph whose skills are derived from the monsters you combined. Defeating the Metamorph will yield many rewards, including new currency items called Catalysts that let you add various types of special quality modifiers to your jewelry. These quality modifiers both improve specific types of mods on your jewelry and also make it easier to craft associated mods. At the end game, multiple map bosses can be combined to create a single highly dangerous but rewarding metamorph. I'll be doing a deep dive into both the Conquerors of the Atlas expansion and the Metamorph League that comes with it at 1 o'clock today in just over two hours. We'll, of course, be live streaming this. So, for a year, we've had a few developers working on a bit of an experimental skunkworks project at the studio. Let's watch a video about it. <laughs> So mobile games are kind of bullshit, right? You know, pay to win microtransactions, time gates, energy bars, random nag screens, notifications, video ads, you know, you get the idea. There's really a lot of evil garbage going on in mobile games today. But in 2012, when you first released Path of Exile on PC, you really could have said the same thing about a lot of free-to-play games there too. So this is what it looks like. There are eight skill binds, five flasks, the same gear you'd expect to see on any Path of Exile game. One of the major benefits of this project was the tech we've developed. It's allowing us to improve our tools and engine and system across the board for all platforms. Our goal is to bring Path of Exile to mobile with absolutely zero compromise. We wanted to make something that is a real Path of Exile game. We didn't just farm it out to an external studio. It's developed entirely by a team here in New Zealand. The only thing that's fundamentally different between phone games and PC games is that you expect to play for shorter game sessions on the phone. Maps are a perfect length to have the quick turnaround time required for mobile gameplay while retaining all of the deep systems that Path of Exile players expect.
Back then, we really felt like we could do free-to-play on PC without all that player-hostile stuff. So we thought, you know, maybe we can do the same thing on mobile. Maybe we can make a game that bucks all those bullshit trends and make it something that's a good game first, that just so happens to be played on the phone. So needless to say, around a year ago, it became real difficult to announce that. <laughs> but we figured, if we, if we make a sequel and give you that first... <laughs> so, look, the mobile project is really experimental. We haven't really fully decided where we want to go with it yet, but we welcome feedback, and our plan is basically have it at the show floor. It's upstairs in the chill-out zone, which is secretly a mobile zone all along, and it's marked as a chill-out zone on the map to fool you. And uh, play the game, let us know what you think. And on a personal note, this isn't scripted, this part. So on a personal note, I was apprehensive about this project, right? Like, I, I, was, I was unsure we'd be able to do it. But playing the build this week, it's good. It runs fast, it plays well, give it a shot. Let, let the actual demo do the talking. We're going to get um, Ziggy to play it with, uh, with Trevor, the, the mobile fall guy, later in one of the stream sessions. So we'll see his uh, actual legitimate reactions. And let's make it a good product together, because we all want to be able to have something fun to do on phones when we're on the bus and stuff. So give us your feedback. We'll make this what you need it to be. All right. So, one of the great things about porting Path of Excel to iPhone, and of course Android, is that we can easily create a version that runs on macOS. So next year we'll be releasing Path of Excel on macOS alongside 3.10, 3.11. Now, this is going to be the same version as the PC version. It plays on the same servers. It's the same game, not segregated. It's just that you play it on your Mac, so you can play it at work. <laughs> so. I'm also pleased to announce Path of Exile's third collaboration with Twitch Prime. Just before the release of Conquerors of the Atlas next month, we'll be launching a three-month promotion where Twitch Prime members receive a free set of microtransactions every month. You can receive a free one-month trial of Twitch Prime, of course, to try it out and receive free microtransactions on Path of Exile and other participating games. So, you may have looked in your swag bag and found a box with some cards in it. At XLCon, we really wanted players to interact with our staff, so we came up with a game that has a few social elements. Think of it as a card game action RPG that you could only play at XLCon. So all of the GGG staff members will be walking around XLCon as monsters. On their t-shirts, you can see their stats. And in the deck boxes, you'll have weapons and armor you can use to defeat the monsters. So when you kill them, and please don't actually kill them, <laughs> you'll be rewarded with more cards as drops. Your character can have equipped one armor, one weapon, and a shield, or a two-hand weapon, just like the game, as well as an amulet and two rings. The damage on your weapon has to be equal to or larger than the defense on the monster, and the defense on the armor and shield has to be equal to or larger than the attack on the monster. Your rings and amulets can count as either attack or defense, and they're pretty rare to find. This is explained on the rules, and of course, ask any staff members if you need help. To attack a monster, just walk up to a staff member wearing a shirt and show them the equipment you want to use. They'll give you the reward and remove some of the durability from your items, so make sure you don't waste your best items on the trash mobs on the lower level. Now, I should note, the staff have been told what rules to individually use for durability damage. So if they totally wreck one of your best items, that's because their instructions say that that monster wrecks your best items. So it's not their fault. Don't get angry at them. So uh, what's next? Right. You're not allowed to attack the same monster twice in a row. So keep walking around to encounter different staff members. Once you've defeated Katava, then you can start grinding maps. Zana, played by her actual voice actress, is over by the map device on the middle floor where you can buy some maps. Make sure you visit the crafting bench on the top floor if you want to use your currency items. If you can get far enough in maps to kill the guardians, you'll be able to collect fragments required to challenge the shaper. Of course, that's me. <laughs> While I'm going to be super busy during the convention, I'll make time to talk to anyone at the Twitch after party who can bring a set of fragments to challenge me. There's one other thing I wanted to mention. Thanks, I know who you are. <laughs> I, I, I know the account name. <laughs> There's one other thing I wanted to mention while I'm here. We're hiring. So if you want to work for Grindy Gear Games and feel you have the game development experience and skills to make an impact on Path of Exile, please email us at hr at grindinggear.com with a cover letter, resume, and if applicable, code samples or an art portfolio. And the poor person that checks that email address just got a bad surprise. 
OK, guys, so it's time to go and explore ExileCon. In addition to the card game, there's heaps of other things to do. You should definitely play the gameplay demo of Act 1 of the Path of Exile 2 campaign. Upstairs, you'll find a chill-out zone where you can try the experimental mobile project. Online at pathofexile.com slash exilecon is your schedule that shows what talks are happening where and what time your favorite streamers or developers will be hosting meet and greet sessions or appearing on the streamer stage to answer questions and play Path of Exile 2. Tomorrow, Riker will interview my personal heroes, David Brevik and Max and Eric Schaefer, founders of Blizzard North and creators of Diablo 1 and 2. That's going to be a session you can't miss. You'll probably also want to watch the racing finale tomorrow to see who is going to be crowned the ExileCon 2019 race champion, winning $10,000. Finally, don't forget to check out the 390 and 400 deep dives in two hours here in the main theater for heaps more information about the new expansions. After all of that, we'll see you at the Twitch after party tomorrow night to relax after a long and very busy weekend. Thank you so much for attending, and have a great show. <laughs> Thank you so much. Oh. You're not Mike. I know I'm not Mike. There we go. Oh, no, there we go. Thank you so much, guys. That was a lot of fun. Yeah. <laughs> it is so good to have you guys here. Yeah. <laughs> that was great. <laughs> awesome. All right. It feels like we worked towards this for 13 years now. <laughs> yeah. All right. Anyway, see you around XRCon. I'm the yep. elder, by the way. Yep. I'm going right. to. <laughs> see you guys later. <laughs>